Hey, my name is Christopher Saunders, and this is the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. I'm pleased to have on a returning guest, Jakari Grant, who's at URI right now, going into his redshirt junior year. Jakari, thanks so much for being able to come back on, man. It's great to be able to have you. It's nice to be on. I'm uh, happy to have me again. You know, I think, you know, there's so many things I want to talk to you about, because I actually, for people who may not know, I had you on right when the pandemic was really ramping up as far as people staying home and such. And yep. before we get into all that, I just want to ask, you know, because it's been a while, so I know you and I have texted back and forth and such, but how is your family and yourself and is everybody doing okay? Uh, everybody in my family is doing pretty good. Everybody's healthy. The pandemic didn't really like uh, affect my family in a negative way. I'm pretty sure nobody in my household got COVID. Uh, even when I was off at school and like everybody in my dorm, my suite got COVID and I was lucky enough not to get COVID. So we were blessed with that, that we stayed healthy through the pandemic. You must be the missing, the, the, you know, you must be the missing link for COVID. Everyone else gets it, but not you, not Jakari. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what happened. I live with uh, five dudes and I was the only one not to get it. So it was a miracle. Yeah, right. A miracle or maybe you were just smart. Could be that. I mean, yeah, I didn't, I really stayed in my room. I didn't really go anywhere, but I can't even talk bad about the guys I live with because we all were like that. So it just, I don't know. It's just one of those things. Yeah. COVID doesn't have really a, a, a specific type. It's just wherever it wants to go. Yeah, exactly. You know, but hey, I'm glad everybody, you know, yourself and everybody is doing well. I'm happy to hear that. Appreciate um, it. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. Uh, now, obviously about yourself, I think, I would love to be able to hear kind of how have the last, since the last time we talked, kind of just catch me up. What have you been up to? You know, I know the restrictions have been easing up. So you've been, I'm hopeful, been able to do a little bit more training and such for this upcoming season. Uh, yeah, I, I've been uh, going to the gym. Me and my girlfriend, we go every day. And then uh, twice a week, I go train with uh, my quarterback coach, Def QB coach. Uh, we get to work. We work hard twice a week, whether it's hot outside, cold, whenever. So I just do I stay consistent with those two things. And I try and take care of my body, like by stretching at home and just doing all the little maintenance things that most people uh, wouldn't see. How tough was it during the peak of the pandemic? And I know I've talked to you about actually when I had you on about how tough mm -hmm. it mentally. But now that you've been through it. I know you said that you were just going to do your best and try to look at the positives every day. Is that something that you did during the peak of the pandemic? Because I know that there's been a lot of people I talked to, man, that said there were days that I just had to look myself in the mirror and say, I need to do this. I can't just, just not do it because of COVID. Yeah. I mean, I just tried to like not make an excuse by saying, Oh, since things are shut down, I can't just, I could just sit in the house and not work out. Like I had to like stay working because I, I had the mindset if I'm not doing something, I know somebody else is like my competition, they're working. And that's just kind of like the mindset that'll keep me going. Even if uh, say the gym is shut down, I could uh, go outside in the front yard and uh, do footwork drills on my ladder. And my girlfriend is a big help with that because she would be outside with me and be out there motivating me too. So is she the one catching passes uh, on the 10 yard curl route? <laughs> nah, she, she, uh, I don't think she can handle my passes that much. I would probably throw to my brother, but she's out there t cheering me on and telling me when I'm messing up and when I'm doing good. Hey, sometimes that's the biggest, you know, those kind of people, man, are, I think, perfect because when you're riding high, you think you're really not because then they tell you like it is, you're not doing this, you're not doing that. You're getting a little bit too cocky. It's good to have somebody like that. Yeah, definitely. Also, the I think her biggest uh, thing that helps me is that she could remember, like, things that I can't. Like, I could ask her, like, oh, uh, Bay, like, what do I have to do today? She'll tell me, oh, you have to work out in Bridgeport. Then you have a meeting with your coach at, like, 6 o'clock or something like that. So little things like that, that just uh, – it's a big help having someone like that. I've, I, I, you know, same thing with my girlfriend. She remembers stuff that I can't – you know, there's so many things going on in my day, it's hard for me to remember it. I don't yeah. know how she remembers it. I can only imagine the same thing for your girlfriend as well. Yeah, I know. It's 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 crazy. I think girls just have that in them that guys don't. I don't know. She even like she even I remember even yesterday, like she took the time to make me a to-do list because I kept forgetting like what I had to do. Mm -hmm. Hey, happy wife, happy life, right? Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> 
I'm so happy to hear that, man. And that's great to be able to know that you have people in your corner, you know, and I think though, too, it helps that. And I think, I think you would agree with this, that you, you, you know, you keep the, you keep the people around you. I don't want to say a small amount of people, but you make sure that you keep positive people around you because you, because you know that at some point football is going to end and that there's going to be a second career and you don't want people just hitching the back of the ride just for yeah. one side of your career, you know? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've stayed friends with the same people that I've been friends with my entire life. Like I talked to the same people, even uh, my closest friends that I probably don't even talk to every day, even when we uh, link up after it's been like a few months, I've been in school and they've been at school. We link up and it's still like we've seen each other every day. So I keep those people around me and people who are positive minded people, people who are trying to do uh, not exactly the same things I'm doing, but just they're trying to do good things into life. I don't want to have like people around me who aren't doing anything or they're into the wrong thing because that type of energy can affect you too even when you're trying to stay positive i mean i can't tell you how many people that i've known both in my playing career you know throughout my years early years and then also doing now with the broadcasting and you know uh, podcast side where you know athletes keep the wrong people with them and it affects them on both sides both on and off the field and it kind of negates all the good that they've done because they're known for the one or two bad things. Or yeah. you get older, man, it's, you know, you kind of really see who are your friends and who are just there for the fun stuff. Not when you like, hey, I need to move. Can you help me? No, I can't because I'm doing something else. You know what I mean? Yeah, I definitely agree. I think it's, I think it's bad when, like, people who are athletes, people who are uh, getting famous to have, like, a bunch of yes men around, people who are just there for the ride and they want to have – and they want access to you because of the things you provide, even if you're going into the wrong things. I think it would be better if you have people who are real around you and say you want to go uh, blow your money somewhere doing something stupid. You'll have the people who are solid around you and say, no, I don't think you should do that. I think you, you should do something better with it or – I don't think you should be hanging around this person because I don't like uh, their energy or what they're representing. Just stuff like that. I think having solid people around you uh, will keep you on the right direction. And speaking of two solid people, I know you and I were talking before we started this that you are actually friends with two now drafted players or in the league players, uh, one to the Jets, one to the Cowboys. I think those are the kind of people that are great to have as friends, but also the fact that You've known them for so long. You grew up, I think, with one of them. That kind of is another relationship that's also very special as well. Yeah, I definitely have a, a special relationship with both of them. Tyler, I knew him for a longer period of time. But Jason, he's also my brother, too. Like, I still uh, reached out to him when he was at Pitt. And even now, uh, when he's with the Jets, we still uh, keep in contact. So having those guys in my corner and me being in their corner, it's just a, it just works both ways, really. Have they, you know, anything that you could share? Have they shared anything that was like funny or maybe kind of surprising to you? Like, oh, I didn't know that they did that in the league. Now I know. Um, well, the first thing that uh, I talked to Jason, because he came to the camp in Windsor that I had talked to you about before the show. Mm -hmm. And uh, the first thing he told me was that, uh, that he uh, intercepted intercepted uh, Zach Wilson's first pass, so that was that was a pretty cool thing to hear. Well, I hope he didn't return it back for a touchdown because we know what happened with Sam Darnold with his first pass. He yeah, didn't back for a touchdown. Hopefully, he doesn't do that in the game. But practice is the time to make those mistakes. Oh, 100 percent. You know, I think yeah. if you want to do anything, you'd rather mess up in practice because I, I'm sure you could speak to maybe you know, certain practices leading up to a week where you felt like, I really don't feel good. I looked really crappy. But then once the lights came on and there was competition, the switch flipped. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and act like everybody has a perfect week every week of practice. I mean, there's definitely those days where you may not be into it or you're just not making the right reads or the right throws at the time. But I definitely feel like for me personally, when it's time for the game, I like after that first hit, I think it's when the switch flips when I'm ready to go, like I'm in game mode. Now, I kind of want to, you know, you, you talked about you being at school. And as far as from the uh, the in class, like how 
how tough was that because of all the protocols and all the rules, mask wearing and everything face to like, just how was that? Because I know various people kind of took it in a different way. Well, this year at Rhode Island, it was it was pretty rough because they weren't really certain on certain protocols when we first got there in the fall. So when we did the first like few fall practices, uh, one player and the coach got COVID and we had to quarantine for two weeks. Like we had to shut down everything. Everybody who lived close enough or had a car went home mm-hmm. and people who lived far away had to go to uh, a hotel near campus for two weeks. So that was rough. And then when we were in the spring season after we got through fall ball, uh, I think it was a crazy number. Of, uh, I think about 40% of the players and staff contracted COVID within like a week and we had to shut our spring season down. So it was definitely tough and it it led to us having to make some tough decisions because with all those people missing, it was a game week, mind you. Mm-hmm. And we had to decide if we were going to play or not. And there was a people who wanted to play no matter what. And there's people who were like, we don't have a lot of guys that we uh, need to win. So there's no point in playing. It's going to just hurt our ranking because we were two and one at the time ranked like 18 in the country so we had like stuff to we had games to play like we had things to play for like conference championship play spring playoffs like we didn't want to just throw it away so it was it led to a lot of tough decisions but it was it was rough on your on your uh mental health and like your mind how did you handle it man i know you know i'm sure everybody could kind of speak to in their own way but as someone like yourself who who puts everything they have into practice games film study, everything. And with COVID now putting a wrench into as far as the season in the spring and such, how did you, how did you manage? I don't want to say put up with it. Cause I feel like that's a negative thing to say, but how did you deal with the adversity? I guess that's probably a better term. How did you deal with the ups and downs with this? I mean, me personally, I tried not to, uh, how am I going to say this? I tried to just keep everything light. Like, I just had to think about how we're going to football practice, even though we have to wear masks there. We can't, like, be close to each other. But I had to think about we're going to football practice. We're going to play football, and football is fun to me. So I just look at it that way. And then after practice, even though we had a bunch of protocols about we can't be around us, regular, the I don't want to say regular season, but the non-athletes, around campus, so I just hung around my teammates and I have a good bond with my teammates. So we'll be laughing and joking and all like, just, we just kept it really light and happy around. So it, we weren't just constantly thinking about COVID and all the negative things that come behind it. I almost feel like that. And I know COVID has shown us a lot in this world, good, bad, and indifferent. Yeah, but I think, I think for the good man, I think it's because of COVID in the beginning, we were all forced to stay home. And I think it mm-hmm. kind of grew the family, your family, my family, and everybody, I think, closer together in so many ways. And I think when I think of how it has affected a football program, you or I, for example, I think, like you said, how you can only really be around your teammates. You guys were laughing and just, it almost seemed like you guys were each other's medicine. If somebody was struggling, there would be 20 guys helping and vice versa. And I think having that, is so healthy, especially when you and I talked about now and, you know, back in the previous, when I had you on about the mental health and how everybody deals with, especially COVID, not in the same way. Yeah, definitely. Uh, We definitely were there to pick each other up when times were hard because it was definitely hard for certain guys because, especially myself uh, too, because I mentioned to you that my uh, five roommates got COVID and I didn't, but when someone you live with gets COVID, you have to quarantine for uh, two weeks. So I had to quarantine for two weeks on like three different occasions. So I'm getting sent home from Rhode Island to Connecticut and I had to pack my stuff, go home. Then after two weeks, pack my stuff and go back. So that started after the third time I I got kind of upset and I can't even lie about it. I was a little upset about it, but that was definitely hard to handle. But, I would stay in contact with uh, my friends and my family at home definitely helped me through it. And it was good to uh, come home and be around my family because usually on a regular school year, I'm never home until uh, a week for Thanksgiving and the uh, winter break. And then 
summer I'm home for like two weeks and then I go back to campus. So it was it was good to have that family time. That was a positive that came out of me having to quarantine and go back and forth. And with you having to quarantine for basically what six weeks because of the yeah. three times. I mean, how did you? I I I don't know if schoolwork was something that you did or I mean, what did you do to kind of? Did you watch film? Did you read up? I mean, was there a book that you liked? I mean, what did you do to kind of get, just get yourself through six weeks? I, I guess basically that's what I'm trying to say. I mean, I would just come home. I would have to stay on top of my schoolwork, mm -hmm. but most of it was online. So I would just go on my laptop like every day and just do something or look to see if I had something to do. Mm -hmm. and then I would just uh, really, I wasn't really, I'm probably not supposed to say this, but I wasn't really doing a disciplined quarantine because I wasn't like in my house, in my room like I was supposed to. But I would just uh, be around, go to the gym with my girlfriend, like I mentioned before. And then I saw, ended up seeing like some of my friends whose seasons got canceled because they was they were home too. Mm -hmm. And we would just, actually, we would like sit and talk about like stuff like that was going on at school as far as like COVID protocol and like what their school was doing different than our school and like mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I just was around people who could help me cope with what was going on. You know, I think, you know, maybe you weren't sitting in your room for two straight weeks and not doing anything. I think it was healthy that, and I'm sure you were safe as far as when you were with your friends and doing everything possible. Yeah, but I think, definitely, I think doing that man is, and this is just my opinion, but I think doing that is so crucial because for two weeks, six weeks total, you were basically like, you got to go home and you can't do anything you find me something that sits in the room for six weeks and does nothing and i'll show you a lie you got we're yeah. humans. we need to talk to people we need to live our life you know what yeah I mean? exactly sitting in your room for six weeks i know the guys in the hotels they told me that they were like going nuts because they literally couldn't go anywhere like they were bound to their hotel room and the school had to deliver them food uh they had three meals a day and they like gave them snacks for their hotel room but other than that they were just in their room for those two weeks i don't know about you but three meals a day snack that doesn't sound like <laughs> yeah that's not it that sounds like jail to me. yeah I, I was i was trying to think of a nice way to put it but yeah it <laughs> like you sound like an animal you sound like jail yeah like, here's your snacks enjoy <laughs> yeah they don't even hand you the snack they leave it at the door and knock and run away basically it's almost I don't know. That's just, ugh, I don't know, man. But anywho, so I, you also mentioned how you worked with a deaf quarterback coach, and he seems to work so great with so many quarterbacks. I know he's worked with one, in, and I don't know if you've worked with this young man. Uh, he goes to Crosby High School, uh, Tanner Leo. Tanner, yeah, yeah. I know Tanner. Okay. He's, he's made such immense jumps from yeah. his freshman year until now, just from video. No, I haven't seen him this year. I will, though. Um. What jumps have you made from as far as when you were with him from this calendar year until now? Uh, well, first, I want to second uh, what you said about Tanner. I've only been working for uh, Def QB coach for about a year, some change consistently. Mm -hmm. And Tanner's made big jumps from when I've seen him in this past year. So I definitely agree. But for me personally, uh, just uh, working on my feet, really, because uh, I have a talented arm and that's, it like makes up for like a lot of the mistakes that I make with my lower half of my body. So he definitely uh, makes sure I keep my feet right and my clean up my uh, upper body mechanics because I was more like of a, a raw thrower instead of a mechanically sound thrower. So I definitely had to improve on that. He's helped me with that a lot. I could go, because he recorded my first few sessions with him and he records this stuff uh and the sessions that I have with him now and you could just see if you like put the two videos next to each other a big improvement from when I first started to now now when you talk about the footwork are you talking about like as somebody who is a novice when it comes like if you ask me about pitching mechanics I could talk to you but mm -hmm. throwing mechanics quarterback mechanics still a work in progress so kind of take me into the footwork because I'd love to be able to hear how your improvement has been because it sounds very, uh, very unique. Yeah. So when I first started working with him, uh, I know like in pitching, the pitcher, he always like, he usually like finishes on his left leg, like leaning over, like with his leg locked out. 
And when throwing a football, that's like technically bad in the kinks because you're supposed to have a soft front leg to stay balanced with your throw and bring all your energy mm -hmm. uh, to the target. And I was having trouble with locking out my uh, my plant leg, and it was affecting my throws. It was making um my like the passes that I'm trying to drive downfield, like the deep digs, the seams. And they would end up dying because I locked my front leg, and it just blocks the power, the energy that I'm trying to push towards the target. So. I definitely, he worked, uh, he gave me a lot of in-home drills to do uh, that I would just end up doing in my house or if I'm in my girlfriend's apartment or whatever. And I would just keep doing that. And that just uh, led to a big improvement in my uh, lower body mechanics. Would you say that these mechanical flaws was something that you've had, I guess, from the beginning? Because you mentioned how you have a God-given arm, but the legs have been kind of been hampering that you know, spurts of where you'll make throw, like you can make out of five throws, let's say before the mechanical change, you can make two great throws. And then the other three are like, eh, I don't know. Would you say that that was probably the one thing that was really hindering what could have been, and now is a very progressive leap for you at the quarterback position? Yeah, definitely. I'm pretty sure from high school until now, or until before I started working with him, I would like have like, make like plays that a lot of people can't make, but I would also end up messing up a play that everybody should be able to make, if that makes sense. Like the easy stuff, like throwing a swing, but I'm trying to throw it with just my arm and not getting my feet to the target, like simple stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, cleaning up those little mechanics will make sure that I'm good at everything and not just doing spectacular things and slipping up on the easy things. I get what you're saying. You know, again, to go back to baseball, it's like having touch to have a feel for like different pitches for you. It's mm -hmm. being able to have the proper footwork to throw the bubble screen. You know, you and I joked about the 10 yard curl route for your girlfriend, you know, yeah. to throw the various, like it, everybody can throw a 50 foot bump. Let's yeah. be honest. I mean, somebody, I mean, I can't, but I know you can, <laughs> but for, you know, you know, in the game of football, you have to be able to throw both inside and outside the numbers. I think Lamar Jackson from the Ravens, is very limited. Now he's a God-given runner. I won't talk anything mm -hmm. about that, but the throwing, that's a different issue. And I think for you to understand and not just say, well, you know what? My, my arm can get me through whatever. For you to see that and understand it, not be stubborn, man. I think that takes a lot of, you know, right in the heart. That takes a lot of guts. Yeah. And also I just, it would just baffle myself, honestly. Like I would make a great throw and I would mess up on a, a short throw, which doesn't even make sense when you're thinking about it. But I think that uh, as far as Lamar Jackson, yeah, he definitely, uh, he's leaving. If he doesn't work on his mechanics, he's not going to reach to his full potential, in my opinion. Because if he could couple, if he could get his arm talent to where his feet are, he would be probably the best quarterback ever. Yeah, he's, yeah. His, his running man, it's like, you can't, you can't like when he gets to his fourth gear is better than some guy's first gears. Like, yeah, definitely. He's probably one of, he might be top five fast people on his team. And that's rare for a quarterback. It's oh, usually a receiver or DB. That's one of those guys, but a quarterback to be like that, that's special. And you know what, too? I think it'd be great for the NFL because I feel like, and again, I could be in the minority here, but I think it's great to have, you know, a black quarterback to be the face of the league. I think that throughout the, for, throughout the years, man, you know, when I think of when I hear top quarterbacks, it's the Brady's, the Mannings and, you know, Marino, Aikman. But you're noticing a trend. OK, yeah. I With think Deshaun he, Watson, Russell yes. Wilson, uh, yes. Holmes, Jackson, those guys. Yeah. Yes, I think it'd be great. And I understand Deshaun Watson has his off the field stuff. I, that's I'll leave him out for the time being. But yeah. I think to have guys like Mahomes and uh, Lamar Jackson and Russell Wilson, to have those kind of guys, man, I think it's great for the league, but also it's great for guys like yourself and others who think, you know what, if I get to this level, I won't get the recognition. No, you will, and here's why. And I think that's – it's great to see that. Yeah, definitely. And also for the young kids, too, because – even like with my generation, the black quarterback that I seen was Michael Vick. And that was like the only one that I could think of like as a young, young kid. Like when I first started playing, I was seven because I got those are the first cleats I got of Michael Vick cleats. But it's also good to see young black kids these days 
and they could say, uh, yeah, I can grow up and be a quarterback and I don't have to grow up, play quarterback when I'm little to change positions because a coach may not believe that I can have the mental capacity to play the position or the leadership ability to play the position. So I think seeing uh, the way that NFL is training right now is definitely a big plus for uh, black young kids these days. And like you said, they all look up to their who else, you know, who else, the idols, the guys who were above them. I think, yeah. I think realistically, I think Drew Brees opened up the door for Russell Wilson because they're about the same height. The same height, yeah. Yeah, and because, oh, the quarterback has to be 6'4", whatever. No, he doesn't. They're all built different mm-hmm. shapes and sizes. And I think Lamar Jackson could – and I don't know who the next great quarterback is going to be as far as that side man. But I think, you know – with Lamar Jackson, because of what he can do, who knows what could happen in a couple years if whoever is in kind of the same mold, now he will get an opportunity. And then it's a trickle-down effect. I think it's great. Yeah, I think it's awesome too, especially to harp on Lamar Jackson's point. Uh, most people said that his style of play wasn't going to work. Mm-hmm. And I think he definitely helped uh, quarterbacks that have that rare athleticism but can also throw the ball they can have the ability to come out of college and say, if Lamar Jackson could do it, I could do it too. And they have the same ability. So I think it's, it's leading to a, a, a great turnaround in the future. Oh, 100%, man. Uh, Jakar, I really do appreciate you coming on. I do have a couple more questions for you. Um, okay. As far as now going into now redshirt, you know, junior year, the competition you told me about a little bit tough, a little bit, but just take me into kind of, the mindset, because I've told you this during the pandemic and I felt like just watching the film that I was able to watch. Now knowing about your footwork, I'm really looking forward to watching the film and I'd love for you to send it to me sometime so I could see it. Um, Yeah, I got you. I feel like there's going to be a pop for you. And what I mean by that is, I think of teams who are at the peak of popping, going to surprise. I feel like there's people who could think, oh, kid hasn't played that much, not whatever, can't do this, can't do that. I think you can prove them wrong. What is your mindset going into this year? My mindset going into this year is that uh, I'm ready to ball and uh, I have total confidence in myself and my abilities. And when I go into camp, I'm just going to go in and take the job, really. Hey, enough said right there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I feel like the, for the for young kids and, and – uh, kids that are growing up into sports not just only football I feel like the first thing you have to have is confidence in yourself because if you're not if you're not going to believe in yourself how are you going to convince somebody else to believe in you Mm -hmm. no you're right I mean if you if you go in timid and nervous it's almost like you're going into a shark infested water bleeding yeah exactly the attack Mm -hmm. you have to be the alpha you have to be I mean think about Lamar Jackson you think he goes into practice thinking oh I hope I don't get hit by that defensive end no he's gonna outrun him because he knows yeah him. exactly you know yeah yeah having being confident in your abilities it just it reflects in your game and you can see it in your body language how you're moving mm-hmm. and how you're talking it just it's just obvious when you're when you're have that, that confidence about yourself and it just leads you to play at a higher level now is there going to be a normal regular season as far as the allotted games and uh do you know anything about kind of the protocols because i'm sure there's still going to be something for covid um it's going to be a a regular season as far as what i've been told so far like as far as the fans the capacity Mm -hmm. uh the access to facilities uh it's uh going to be a regular year like back like it was in 2019 all the years before that do you know if there's anything as far as players who are, because I know in other sports, there's different rules for vaccinated, unvaccinated. I don't know if you know this, but I figured I'd ask you, do you know if you or I has said anything as far as if you're vaccinated, you don't have to quarantine. And then obviously if you're unvaccinated, enough said. Uh, they said that unvaccinated players uh, would have to quarantine if they were in close contact with somebody that had COVID or if they contract COVID. Okay. Yeah, I feel like, man, I, I don't know if you paid attention to what happened in the College World Series with North Carolina State as far as they were one one went away from getting to the College World Series and they had an outbreak and they were kicked out because yeah, that's they tough. yeah, they couldn't feel the team. And I would hate to see that happen to URI if they're on the, you know, if they're on the precipice of doing something and then because of, for whatever reason, COVID affects that. And I hope COVID does not affect any teams, especially URI. 
you know? Yeah. I mean, hopefully that we've, since we've got a vaccine and we've been going through this for a year that uh, mm -hmm. everything should be worked out from here on out. I hope, man. But hey, I really do appreciate you coming on. Um, I wish you nothing but the best of luck as far as this upcoming season. I'm looking forward to you winning the spot and just straight yes, sir. Up, man. You know that. Yes, sir. I appreciate it. Thanks no for problem. having me on. No problem, man. Anytime. I'll wrap things up in the Connecticut Sports Talent Show. So until next time, stay safe. And our CT stands for Connecticut Talent. I'm on a journey to find them all. Enjoy the rest of your day, everybody. And be well.